after you saw my workout this morning, I got ready and then, sorry, this is so shaky. Obviously I'm driving. I read, I didn't read, I didn't read at all. I formed, I filmed four videos. I filmed my best of 2019, my worst of 2019, most disappointing and most surprising. So I'll be looking out for those videos coming up soon if you guys are interested in watching those. And then my sister came over and we filmed our quarterly most anticipated releases for January, February, and March. I'm driving so slow because I bought some cacti at the grocery store as well and I don't want the dirt to dump out in my car because I needed a couple more cacti for one of my um, shelves over my desk. Anyways, we filmed our most anticipated releases so that was a ton of fun to do with her. And it's about three o'clock now. As soon as I get inside, I'm going to make some lunch. Can't wait to eat, put my groceries away, and then guess freaking what? The whole rest of the night, I don't have to do anything. Nothing at all. It's probably the best feeling in the world. I know that I've been saying that in every vlog lately, but it's because all of the other days have been so, so busy that as soon as it comes time for the weekend and I get a second to not do anything, I just wanna soak it up. Cause I don't know about you guys, but for the holidays, everything is so busy and just so rushed and hectic and chaotic that I can't wait. I mean, I love the holidays, don't get me wrong, but I'm always excited when it's January and the new year. I've started a couple, not really like resolutions, but new um, attitudes and mindsets and a couple new habits. That always makes me excited for the fresh start. So yeah, I've been really happy with that. And I made it to 57% of the way through, uh, up to 57% of the way through getting the ninth this morning while working out. And I'm super loving it. I mean, it's not a new favorite by any means. It'll probably be like a four star book, but pulling into my garage but yeah it's definitely enjoyable it's definitely worth the read thus far I can't wait to talk about it a little bit more or maybe I can just talk about it a little bit now that I got into my garage so getting the night the sci-fi space aspect and the necromancer necromancy aspect is a little bit more intense than I even thought it was going to be, but not like in a bad way. It's it's a little bit hard for me to follow at times, maybe lacking in world. I mean, that's hard for me to say because I think it has good world building, but at the same time, it I need more almost to understand the necromancy aspects just because that's not something I'm really familiar with. So it's almost like I need more explanations and to be able to picture everything that's going on, but in saying that, the necromancy is so cool in this book. And I think it's very unique and just very different. It's something I haven't read about before. So I'm loving that aspect of the book. And picking up those cacti, I have so many thorns in my hands right now. I mean, so many, it hurts. And I just usually like, I don't care if it hurts initially, but then they get stuck in your hand and you forget about them and then you touch other things and it's, um, painful but anyways that's fun so yeah I really do enjoy the necromancy aspect and there is an intriguing mystery that's going on people are being murdered I had no idea what this plot was about because no one ever explains it they just say lesbian necromancers in space which is what got me to pick it up but I think that if I had known a little bit more about the details of the plot then I actually would have been even more excited to pick it up so basically we are following there's like do they call them lichters? I can't remember, but these, the necromancers of each of the eight houses, because house one is where they're headed to, are trying to raise to this status, this like really elite status that's almost godlike, that I think gives them like immortality. And they are trying to figure out how to make that happen. So a necromancer, and I think a cavalier is how you say it, from each house, um, go to, the first house which has these aspects and like places to it that are ancient basically and that people haven't explored in a really long time and they're given no instruction they're just basically you know it's a free-for-all go and do what you will but don't die because things are going to be trying to kill you but in the meantime figure out how to ascend to this godhood type status so that's very intriguing but what I love about it most is Gideon's character. Oh, I just, sh I love her. There's like no romance whatsoever so far, which in my opinion is a good thing, but I just love 
listening to Gideon's thoughts and her snarky attitude, in my opinion, is just, I love it. I'm here for it. It's my perfect kind of character. She's so sassy. She's so sarcastic. She has a foul mouth. She makes nasty jokes. She is kind of like a dude in a way that you would typically think of a man's type of humor compared to a woman's type of humor. And that really appeals to me. So I don't know. I definitely 100% get the hype surrounding Gideon's character. And I've laughed several times. So like I said, I'm 57% of the way through and I can't wait to find out where it goes from here. I think I'll finish it probably on Sunday and then I'll let you guys know my final thoughts then. But I'm gonna take these groceries in, get some lunch and then check in with you guys after that. So we're just here hanging out. I'm editing some videos. Um, this girl keeps kicking my laptop because like I always say, this is how she sleeps, completely on her back. I'm listening to my neighbor's dogs bark. Um, I finally filed a complaint about my one neighbors and I am that neighbor that will file a complaint on anyone. Like, please don't own a dog if you're gonna treat it terribly. Carly's there, Owl was just there. I'm watching Avatar in the background while I edit these videos, which is such a nice time. And I think I might start The Mandalorian tonight. Yeah, I might start The Mandalorian and or I might get in bed and read more of Gideon the Ninth since I'm really enjoying it. But we'll see what happens. I went over to my sister and brother-in-law's house and hung out with them and got to play with my nephew, which was super fun. And I'm glad I got to do that. I have my tattoo appointment in the morning after I work out. And other than that, I don't have too much on the agenda for tomorrow. <laughs> tattoo appointment because first she moved the appointment back so then I was like oh I have time to film a video and then that took way longer than I thought I did the end of the year reading survey which took 30 minutes to film so now I'm on my way to get my tattoo and I'm so excited to show you guys what it is it is from my favorite book series of all time my favorite character of all time says this so if you know anything about my reading taste you'll already know who that is I'll just tell you uh, Mia Carvier from Nevernight is my favorite of all time. So she says this this quote in Dark Dawn and that's when I first read it and immediately upon hearing it I was like I want that on my body. It just describes a lot about a lot of events that have taken place in my life and it means a ton to me so I'm so excited to show it to you guys. Um, I did get to 84% of the way through getting the ninth this morning and it picked, it's definitely picking up here at the end. I'm enjoying it even more now because we are getting some um, information that originally was missing. And because it was missing, I was going to give it like a lower rating because motives and things like that weren't clear because of this information that was missing. But I'm so happy that those things were put in um, at the end because well, I guess not the end, I'm only to 84%, but I'm so glad those things were included because now I have a greater appreciation for the story and such and the characters. I think this book is very unique. Like I said, with the necromancy and the bones and just, I can't remember exactly what they call the creatures that they like make out of bones. Um, but that's very unique and very interesting in my opinion to read about and pretty dark, you know, if you like, you're picturing these like skeleton type things walking around, which is really pretty cool in my opinion. But the other thing that I love the most about it is definitely the characters. I love Gideon. I love Harrow. I love their relationship, which is just like hate basically. And I don't want to spoil anything. I love the way they interact. I love the way that they're growing and we get a lot more of their backstory and things that have happened between the two of them, which adds a lot of insight into why things are the way that they are now and kind of why they treat each other the way that they do. So yeah, it's not, I'm still not um, giving it a five stars. There's still some flaws that I have. Um, I can find a couple faults in it, but for the most part, really super loving reading it. And I'm gonna try to read some more of it during my tattoo appointment. And I'm really gonna try to finish it today so that I can start something new 
tomorrow. I haven't made any more progress in my audiobook, which is Phoenix Unbound. But since I'm about to get to my tattoo appointment, I will talk to you guys about Phoenix Unbound a little bit later and I'll let you know when I finish Giddy in the Night. So I'm already back from my tattoo and it's like not even two o'clock yet and I was my appointment was at one. That's phenomenal. All bandaged up. Ooh, you can see just a little bit. I'm gonna wait to show you guys until I can take the bandage off. And oh, so quick, it was so nice. And then we talked about what, cause I already have this tattoo on the back of my arm so it lines up with that. But for this half sleeve, we talked about what I wanna do for that. So that's super exciting. And now I'm just going to eat some lunch cause it's two o'clock and I'm hungry and it's freezing cold. Oh my gosh, you guys. So I was filming my best of, worst of, disappointing, surprising. And then this morning, I realized I forgot so many books. So I'm gonna put them here and only the people that watch my vlogs will get to know the truth. One that was left off of my most surprising books of the year was Prince of Fools by Mark Lawrence. At least I think I left it off. I think I did because I hated Prince of Thorns so much. So I, it was very shocking to me that I love, love, loved and adored Prince of Fools, but I absolutely cannot wait to continue with that series. So that one belongs on my most surprisingly no surprising on my most surprising books of 2019 and then the ruin of kings by jen lyons belongs on my worst books of 2019 i talked about that in a wrap up so i can link that here but that book was terribly executed in my opinion and just not a good book so i'm so pissed that i forgot because those were like important books for the list but i'm not refilming it <laughs> it's so dark now i just got done filming and this video is gonna be like super dark i figured this might be the easiest way to show you guys my tattoo and you have to hold your wrist like exactly straight for it to be straight but the quote is from dark dawn by jay Kristoff. it says i am the war you cannot win which just means everything to me hopefully you can see it well in this clip and this one's gonna be so easy to heal compared to the other one i'm so psyched about it so happy and yeah i filmed even more videos today i am gonna have like no voice left from all this talking but that's okay there's so many videos that need to get done and get out this end of the year wrap-up stuff is no joke because there's let's see i have filmed five yesterday two today so that's seven in these two days the videos that i filmed but there are still probably let's see books top 20 of 2020 that one tag video what was the other cup? There's a couple more. Oh, favorite authors. Probably five more videos that are like sort of year end wrap ups or like beginning of the year videos that I'm dying to film. And hopefully I don't run out of steam so I can get some of those done tomorrow. I might have to upload more than three times a week for this month. I don't know. I think my reviews will be like bonus videos for each week because um, otherwise I'm just never going to get all this content out. And then it's going to be like February when you're getting my December wrap up and such. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I might have an early dinner here soon and shower. I just want to chill for a minute. I wanted to get some like cleaning and organizational stuff done, but I'm feeling super lazy today. I don't know. Maybe I've been having too much downtime. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just have to show you guys this. This is what I see every day when I come home. Usually these precious girls up here. Hi, honeys. You're so lovely. I love you guys so much. Most beautiful angels. This is our night, my beautiful, beautiful baby. Just been hanging out with me. Watching classic Gilmore Girls. Paris is my favorite, by the way. I am Paris. <laughs> One baby is over there. That's an update on my shelves as well, guys. And that, but I still have to get more. My cacti are waiting to be planted over there. Anyways, where are you going, Carly? We've been hanging out here editing all night and um, so I didn't do any more reading at all because I've been like I have so many videos that I've been editing it's crazy there are so many so I've been doing that and I'm thinking about going to take a bath because I do like baths I want an Epsom salt bath because my muscles I have a torn hamstring injury that I'm dealing with from about a year ago now still and so they're really great for my muscles I really should do that and it's just relaxing but when I'm in the bath it forces me to focus on reading and not get distracted I didn't really want to finish Giddy in the Ninth tonight, so that's probably my best shot of doing that. And Kiki has came to see what we are up to over here, right? Lulu? So I'll let you guys know if I finish that. I'm painting my nails in the bathtub, which I've never done before. It's 
going well so far, so this is either a really good idea to save time and make me sit still or a really bad idea because it's not going to dry well in the water. And I have about 60 pages left in Gideon the Ninth. Rana just left, but Carly and Owlbox are here just hanging out with me while we read. <laughs> Hello. So I need to make some salads, which is why you are going to be sitting here in my kitchen. But I just got home from seeing Little Women with my mom and I am not here to do movie reviews, but oh my gosh, I freaking loved it. It was like, I was trying not to cry basically the entire time. It was a long movie, but I was never bored. It was, it's one of my new favorite movies of all time and I plan to like watch it and rewatch it and rewatch it. <laughs> so I love it so much. I think that the actors and actresses did a phenomenal job and it's just a classic. And now I really, really, really want to read the book, which I meant to do before the movie came out, but I didn't. So now I'm just even more eager to pick it up, but I'm going to eat some lunch and then I'll talk to you guys more about books because I finished Getting the Ninth last night and I started a new book this morning and I listened to more of my audio books. So I will catch up with you guys as soon as I get some food in my belly because it's 4.30 now and I haven't eaten lunch and um, per usual, I'm pretty dang hungry. So now that I'm done eating, it's actually way later. I already eat dinner too. Do I have food on my chin? No. The painting my nails in the bathtub went well, by the way. Anyways, I just want to chat with you guys because I said I finished Skitty in the Ninth last night in the bath and towards the end I was debating on not continuing with the series, but then with the ending, 100% have to continue on with it. I'm super excited to see what happens next. She took some risks, I guess I'll say, with how she ended things, but I really enjoyed it. Some of the sci-fi elements, necromancy elements kind of went over my head. I think that the battle at the end was kind of extended a little bit longer than it needed to be. But overall, I was actually very impressed. I gave it a four out of five stars. I'll talk more about it in my wrap up, but I was pretty impressed with it. And then this morning I started Lodestar, Keeper of the Lost Cities, book five. And I am 26% of the way through, I believe. And no surprise, absolutely adoring it per usual. Um, these are just books that I can always, always, always count on to be very enjoyable for me. And then I think I'm 33% of the way through, is it Phoenix Unbound by Grace Draven, which is like a fantasy romance. And it's about these girl who has like witchy Phoenix powers. She always sacrifices herself for the village because every year a woman has to be sacrificed and burned alive basically. And since she has Phoenix powers, she can do that without actually dying. So then someone from her village doesn't need to leave. Well, there is another man who is part of, like he's a gladiator and basically baby Rana fighting for the is it an emperor, empress, I think is what you say. And he is like her slave to do whatever she wants to him with him, implying what that, or meaning what that implies, basically. He recognizes our main character with the phoenix power, the fire powers, and wants to use her in a plot to help them both escape, or to help him escape and get his power in his village back. So 33% of the way through it, three-ish stars right now. I'm not super impressed, but I'll let you guys know once I've read a little bit farther. And I think I'm going to just chill a little bit at, because I edited videos for like hours upon hours yesterday and filmed so much in the last couple days that I don't really feel like doing that. So I just kind of want to relax. I might watch The Mandalorian or I might rewatch more of Witcher. And then I actually ordered, I don't know if you guys have heard of the cross stitch, what is it called? Cross stitch for the feminist or feminist cross stitch or whatever it is. I ordered that on Amazon. It should be here this week. So I'll show you what I got today when I was out um, at the movies. I just got some of the cloth that you use, a little ring, some pretty colors of the threads and the needles and some organizational stuff. So I'm super excited for when that comes in the mail. I got both my girls here, all fox and Rana bear. So yeah, that sounds like a good plan for the rest of the night probably. And I work tomorrow, so I want to try to get to bed early which will be hopefully by 10. If I can go to bed by 10, then we'll be good and start the week off right. I got all my food prep done, lunch is made, things put away, stuff like that. So I'm ready to relax. So I did exactly what I said I wasn't going to do and I edited videos for a while 
after dinner and I read until 33% of the way. So I read a third of this book today and it's almost 700 pages. So that's pretty good. Um, as per usual, Gilmore Girls in the background. And now I'm about to go to bed. So I'm actually going to close out this vlog here. And um, once again, thank you for hanging out with me this weekend and I'll catch you guys next weekend.